Hi, my name is Ryan Campbell, and I'm going to teach you about the Havel-Hakimi theorem and graphic sequences. First off, we're going to do an introduction with some definitions and a graphic sequence example, and then we will get into the theorem, which is theorem 1331 from our textbook, and that theorem is an if and only if um, theorem, so we will have to prove sufficiency and necessity. Our first definition is degree sequence. A degree sequence is a list of vertex degrees, and we write them in non-increasing order. So that means that D1 has to be our greatest um, degree of a vertex. So it has to be adjacent to the most vertices. Um, then D2 can be equal to D1 or less than D1, but it cannot be greater. And that continues all the way until we have finished up with the last vertex. Proposition 1328 states that the non-negative integers D1 through Dn are the vertex degrees of a graph if and only if our sum is even. We know that the degree sum has to be even in order for everything to fit um, on a graph. Our graphic sequence is the new thing today. Um, a graphic sequence is a degree sequence, but it has to be a simple graph. So um, we need to make sure that our simple graph um, does not have any multiple edges, it does not have any loops. Um, a simple graph with degree sequence D, we say realizes D. Um, that realizes means that the simple graph goes along with the degree sequence that we have listed. And here's an example of a graphic sequence. Um, first off, we have a K1 and a K2, which make our graph. And we have the degree sequence 1, 1, 0, because our first component has degrees 1 and 1, and those are the greatest numbers. And um, our smallest number, 0, is that isolated vertex. If we add vertex W in the upper right-hand corner, it is going to be, and if we make it adjacent to um, the top left and the bottom right vertices, it changes the degrees of the top left and the bottom right vertex. So our new graph has um, the sequence 2, 2, 1, 1. Um, the bottom left vertex is still degree 1. Now, this is a recursive condition. If we completely take away W now, make it a cut vertex, um, that decreases those um, degrees back from 2 and 1, back to 1 and 0, up at the top. Okay, now that we've gone through the definitions and a small example, um, we are going to learn about the hobble hakimi theorem and prove it. The Hubble-Hakimi theorem states that for n is greater than 1, an integer list k of size n is graphic if and only if d prime is obtained from d by deleting its largest element delta and subtracting 1 from its delta next largest elements. The only one element graphic sequence is d1 equals 0. First, we're going to go with the sufficiency portion of that proof. So I change this to an if-then statement. And we are going to look at if n equals 1, which will be the very last portion of the havel hakimi theorem. It says for n equals 1, the statement is trivial. That's because for n equals 1, there's only one vertex, so its degree has to be 0. So we have given D with this degree sequence where D1 is greater than or equal to every other degree. And we have a simple graph G prime with a degree sequence D prime. Okay, so that D prime is going to be something different than the D that we were given at the beginning. And our proof says that we have to add a vertex W. It's just any vertex, and it's going to be adjacent to the vertices with degrees d2 minus 1, d delta plus 1, 
minus 1, and everything in between. So we are not necessarily taking the very largest degrees that are left over. So D2 is the largest degree that's left over if D1 goes away, of course, because D1 is our greatest degree. But D2 might be equal to D1. And we know that we can't add a number back on to D2 here in a minute because that would be greater than D1. So we are taking degrees D2 minus 1 all the way through D delta plus 1 minus 1. So as we add W in, adjacent to all of those, the degrees will increase to be D2 all the way through D delta plus 1. And here's an example of that sufficiency proof. Let's say we start with D equals the degree sequence 4, 3, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1. That means that D prime is going to be 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so we have gotten rid of the 4 that we started with. And since we can say like W is going to be added in, so all of those degrees are smaller than they would have been if it was just D. Okay, so we're starting out with the black portion there, and we are going to be adding in W. Okay. Uh, since D2 is a 3, we are going to be adding on um, vertex W. It is going to be adjacent to uh, a vertex with degree 2, 2, 2, and 1, because those are D2 minus 1 all the way through D delta plus 1 minus 1. Okay, and since uh, uh, D1 is 4, W has to be adjacent to 4 vertices as we add it in. Okay, so that adds in W and all of the edges that you can see that are um, red dashed lines. And as we add those in, we end up with um, the graph on the right, which has the degree sequence 4, 3, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, which is what we wanted to begin with. Now let's take a look at the necessity proof. The Havel-Hakimi theorem backwards says that if D prime is obtained from D, by deleting its largest element delta and subtracting one from its delta next largest elements, then an integer list k of size n is graphic. So we're going to be starting by producing uh, g prime realizing d. And we are also starting with the simple graph g realizing d. We are going to find a w, which is a vertex in g, that has degree of delta. So it would have that very first largest degree in the sequence. We also here want to find a set of vertices, which we're going to call S. The size of S is going to have to equal delta. And that degree sequence for delta is going to be D2 all the way through D delta plus one. So there are delta of those vertices, delta degrees in there. If the neighborhood of W is the same as the set S, we just delete W from G and we obtain G prime. So then our theorem has been proven. Except if the neighborhood of W is not S, we are going to have to change S and change the other things that are left over so that we can make this actually happen the way it's supposed to. So let's take a look at how we can change S and the neighborhood of W. Okay, so here's the case where the neighborhood of W is not equal to S. So we have a vertex V in S that is missing from the neighborhood of W. So we are going to choose, um, let's choose vertex X that's in S and vertex Z that is not in S. 
but we have to be specific about that. Vertex W cannot be adjacent to X, and vertex W has to be adjacent to Z. So Z is in the neighborhood of W, but it's not in S. X is not in the neighborhood of W, but it is in S. So what we really want to do is switch those two vertices so that Z is in S and X is not in S. We also know that since the degree of X is greater than or equal to the degree of Z, there's some other vertex Y in the vertices of G so that X and Y are adjacent to each other, but Z and Y are not adjacent to each other. And we know that's true because Z is adjacent to W, but X is not. So there has to be at least one extra vertex such as Y. So we're going to take those um, edges, edge W, Z, and edge X, Y, and we're going to completely get rid of them. Let's delete them. But then we're going to add in edges W, Z, and Y, Z. So that now W and Z type that wrong, okay? We need to make sure that um, W, Z is deleted and we add in W, X. And then when we get rid of X, Y, we need Y, Z to get added in there. And once we um, replace those two edges with the other two edges, um, we are going to have one more vertex that was not in the neighborhood of W that gets added into the neighborhood of W. And it is now also in S. So we are trying to make it so that the um, intersection between the sets S and the neighborhood of W um, becomes exactly those sets. It's just one set, and they're exactly the same. So we've gotten one step closer to doing that. We're going to repeat this process where we swap out vertices with each other until G has been converted into G star. So we're changing our original graph and changing it into something else. Um, once we do that, we can delete W from that big graph G star and we obtain the desired G prime realizing D because we delete all of the elements of S, which is now exactly the same as the neighborhood of W, and we have realized D prime, okay? That makes sure that our integer list is graphic, okay? Because D prime is going to get us that graphic sequence. I hope that you learned something from our Havel-Hakimi theorem proof. Thank you.